publicly in May of last year, which is surprising. So that's like 18 wow. months ago that we were saying to the public we want to run this. It had been discussed for a few years before. But it was when we really had a specific plan for how we wanted to announce 4OO that we had to make a convention around it. We needed to make a big deal about it, and we decided to do it the expensive way, hence a multi-million dollar convention. <laughs> so this was a, a convention formed around a massive expansion yes rather than the other way around that's wild that's right we didn't make 4.0 a few weeks ago just to have some content to show it at <laughs> are you saying you've actually prepared for this there has been some work we wow, we, we made a okay. video you'll see it and uh Ooh. and i wrote some slides last night quite late <laughs> i left that vip dinner early to do so just last night yeah okay knowing you chris i expect about four hours of content in that one hour keynote presentation i've been told to speak slowly Oh, yeah? Yeah. Can we have a demo of that? <laughs> uh, you'll see it in a few minutes. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I wonder how, how much do you play into the roots of the players that play Path of Exile? Do you kind of see the player base as they are now and try to get the next step of evolution? Or do you try to go back, you know, several content cycles or several years back and try to play at the hints of why people started? Like, what, what, is, what do you kind of see as the, the direction options each time you need to add content to the game? Well, we want to make sure to appeal to both new players and existing players. And for something like Exocom, we want to make sure to hint at new content. Like, what is this tree? There is no tree in the current version of Path of Exile that looks like that. But there maybe isn't. there is in the future. Mm -hmm. And so we've also got stuff around, like the map device and so on, which are related to the current version of the game. And so we made sure to both appeal to the nostalgia of people that have been playing for seven years. Like, all the people I've spoken to so far have been like, oh, I started with closed beta and so on. And it's, those are the reasons why they came out to New Zealand, because this is such an important part of their life for so long. Though, on the other hand, we want to show them the future. We want to show them what kind of stuff and we're working on and excite them about new things. I do have to ask you, from everything from the merch store, Yes. aside from Celestial Cat Socks, which is obviously the best, it is. what's your favorite piece? Sounds better. Okay. Yeah, I put 10 aside. <laughs> 10? <laughs> yeah, for myself. <laughs> nice. The uh, little plushies are quite adorable. I what is the functionality up. behind the, the, the Chaos Orb? Ball. But right. if you throw it at a piece of your older clothing, can you get an improvement? Nice. Well, people have asked me, what are the RNG benefits of having this exalted orb stress ball near your computer? And oh, it's the exalted orb. Yeah, it is. There's no RNG improvements. You can't improve your clothes. But what happens is when you fail to improve them, when you fail to play Path of Exile successfully, you can relieve your stress by squeezing it. Mm. Exactly what it says on the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> we would not sell something that made the game better for you. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if, if people who play Path of Exile read the back of packaging. You know, mm. it, it, It's just better to figure it out on the fly. I've, I spent quite a while of my, like some of my lifespan iterating on the wording on the packaging personally. I want to make sure people read it and appreciate <laughs> okay. it. Okay. Just to, to let you know, look. Kiwi players aren't very good at reading Reflect in particular, so I don't think they'll be reading the back of any cards. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, I hope you're not thinking of doing anything to that red shirt, Crip. I still have it around. Um, <laughs> doing something to it might even be like washing it one more time. It's, oh. it, it really has a very limited life cycle left. <laughs> It's a, nice. that's, that's a part of the history as well, I feel. Our, <laughs> our, team, our team respect the shirt you're wearing, by the way. Oh, yes. This is, this is the first... I actually don't remember what it was called. It was the first Challenge League. Yes. Yeah. Did, did it have a name? Or was, was it just... Was the, the Anarchy and Onslaught, maybe? Is the two leagues? Um, the I believe it was. Halfway through the open beta? I know it was... I know that the more, the more difficult parts of completing the challenges were finding all of the exiles right. and killing them. Yep. Because, be anarchy. Okay. The, um, the Righteous Fire Exile, I don't remember her name exactly anymore, but she was really brutally hard back then. Good. You would, you would just, if she was on your screen, you went the other direction. Nice. Brutally hard is something we're trying to get back to part of Exile. <laughs> you'll, you'll see today. Okay. And the other achievement was, uh, the, the other really difficult part was having each copy of every single unique item in the game. And this is particularly hard on hardcore, yep. because very few chevron wrappings and Combs Heart were being found. Yep. At the same time, many more of these items were exiting the league day by day. I understand. Yes. So you're very hard to just have one in hardcore. your inventory for the purposes of acquiring this t-shirt. Yep. We actually learned that when you post something, it's possible for the postal workers to rip the package open and steal it because it's marked Path of Exile. We got a letter back from New Zealand Post saying, your package was pillaged which is the word for like a postal worker taking the shirt out in the post. So there's one of those floating around somewhere. Are these um, 
postal workers now legally re uh, regarded as pirates. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And that's an illegitimate shirt. And I love how this whole section segment was just about Crip flexing on us with his T-shirt. So. Yeah. Well, but we can't talk about the announcements yet, so we have to talk about something, right? <laughs> Zero content. <laughs> Are, um, the challenge leagues are still happening, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely, yeah. Um, is, there, is there any kind of goal to try to have very few winners at the end? I think that, I mean, we stopped giving the shirts out a while ago for a variety of reasons, and the challenges are certainly completable. It's kind of a rite of passage thing where a lot of the player base feel they should be able to complete 36 or 40 of the challenges. Loosely in the future, we are looking at trying to improve the system so that there's a bit more challenge behind the challenges, if you know what I mean? Like there's some extra way of completing stuff. I mean, this ties into a hundred conversations. There's questions about battle passes, which we're not doing at the moment for various reasons, partly because mixing money with challenges is something that's going to be very sticky. But I do want the challenges to be hard. Like, I want it to be something where people can really aim to have a three-month goal for the people who are playing a lot of Path of Exile. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the, the challenges just themselves, um, how, how, how many people do you, do you want to like complete it, complete it? Like you say you want people to kind of feel that accomplishment, but you personally, how, I, how, how do you feel challenges should be? I like the idea that someone who's done everything, there's like five or ten of them in a league, ideally, right? The top five or ten players, we know who they are. There's, they're the people who are getting to 100 first at the moment. We, I want them to have a lot of stuff to do, and this is something we're definitely talking about in the future. There's a lot more leagues coming out for Path of Exile, especially in the build-up to 4.0, so I'd really like to have something that motivates people to play as much as they can and really explore the depths of the new content, because there's often quite rare stuff to find there, and just having it be a challenge completion to see it isn't really as, as good as we could go with this. Now, I'm curious for maybe some of the older challenge leagues, what's the fewest completionists you've ever had in one of the challenge leagues, if I, you know? I don't have the stats on hand. There are some of them that are certainly harder than others. You mm -hmm. can tell because Reddit's angry during those three-month periods. <laughs> Is that when you're kind of relishing? Um, I don't really relish Reddit anger, no. Oh. To be honest, there's a bit of a doubt. But, so. but, it, but if, it's, if you, you want the game to be hard, you want people to be brutally destroyed by the game difficulty. So, so that, there's, there's a different angle to that, isn't there? Well, sometimes you get the ability to make it hard for localized situations, like if you're running a special event. The demo we've got at XLCon isn't easy. It's tuned for people like you guys, right? Like, we're trying to kill Crip. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. So... Uh, we may not be able to release it in exactly that state, but we can tune stuff super hard for special events, which is fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think Ready Reddit will be happy or angry just in general when it comes to the 3.9 and 4.0 announcements? Or They're is there some be... kind of combination of these two yeah. I don't want to jinx it, but I'm very proud of all our announcements. Like, yeah, I, I think people are going to like them. It's, it's going to be good. We put a lot of work in. All of the four trailers we're showing are awesome. I mean, they're very different things, right? There's a lot of breadth of Path of Exile being shown today, and people are going to like it. And we're going to show this so soon. Like, like 10, 15 minutes from now, we're starting a trailer that will hopefully really impress people. Can I just say, we've managed to give them, say, four trailers. So thank you for that. We oh, no. some leaks. <laughs> More minor spoilers getting yep. teased out. Was there anything you really wanted to uh, get people, moisten people's expectations a little bit here? <laughs> I'm going to answer that question later on today because oh. I did something that was like, a, I mean, look, anything that was posted on Reddit yesterday was not from us. Like, that's not officially, you know, sanctioned stuff that was being talked about. But we did something a while ago, just planted a clue for the community, and I don't think anyone noticed. I'll talk about it afterwards. Hmm, okay. Well, Chris, I believe you have to uh, run and get ready for this keynote. Yeah, I've got some work thing. It's some, go yeah, some work thing. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> thank I really you. appreciate it, and I'll chat with you guys later on. I Enjoy the show. Look forward to seeing you. Right, good luck, everyone. See you later. Thanks. Good luck. <laughs> well, Chris did a fantastic job of uh, getting us a little closer to the keynote presentation. We have just eight minutes until that'll be beginning, folks. And uh, oh, I don't know about you guys, but I actually didn't sleep last night. I woke up every half an hour. I look would look at the alarm clock every half an hour, and my body was just like, it's Exarcon time. All right. Did you guys get any sleep last night? I had a very thorough 10 minutes. Nice. Um, yes. Impressive. Uh, yeah, it was, good. it was good. I slept more than this, but uh, my excitement for ExileCon has uh, re required me to sleep almost not at all uh, coming here to New Zealand. Yeah, I think I was so excited <laughs> on the 24-hour flight, <laughs> I couldn't sleep at all. <laughs> no. Definitely not ideal, but uh, nonetheless, I feel like the adrenaline will carry through two days here for us. And yeah. uh, it seems like a pretty jam-packed schedule as well. Like, it's back-to-back, -back and there's like 
parallel things running as well. So a lot of stuff I believe is going to be released as VODs after the event. So if you're seeing things on the schedule but you're not able to see them on the stream, do not panic. You'll be getting VODs of that a little bit later. Is there a, have you had a chance to look at the schedule? Anything you really want to check out? Everything. Uh, everything, yes. Yeah. Everything. I'm going to try but and it's, everything. It's, I thought it was pretty interesting that uh, Chris was quite understanding of, of the people who are coming to this event. Uh, they try to make the, the demo as difficult yeah. as possible. It's true. I mean, we're in New Zealand. People that want to be here, they're here, but they really want to be here. Yep. Right? It's not like this is at the doorstep of most of the people that play the game. Path of Exile is, is a very international game, played everywhere around the world. And they had their first convention in New Zealand, which is not exactly not close to anything, but pretty, Slightly pretty close. Slightly far away. Yes. Yep. I heard the next stop is Antarctica. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's not much else down that way. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Like, it's it's a, a screening process, effectively, of people who really, really want to go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, usually at events like the uh, demos are toned down for kind of like to make sure journalists can get in and be pretty comfortable with the game they may not be familiar with. But everyone here is uh, pretty, at least fairly familiar with the game. Yep. I also think you need to respect the fact that this is all being streamed for free. They're not charging any tickets for it. It's all going for free on the YouTube and also that they're letting everyone restream it because a lot of companies aren't as kind when it comes to that. So they're definitely helping the community a lot with this one. Now, for me, the biggest announcement I think Path of Exile has ever had in terms of like blowing me away was when they started talking about the new acts that they're adding to the mm -hmm. game. Because previous to that, they would have like a big announcement every, I think it was every year-ish and some change. Guys, we're adding a new act, but this act is gonna be a little better than the last one. But then when it came to like, what was it? Is it act five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10? Ten. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is still going, right? The announcement's still going and they're still talking about new crazy stuff I couldn't believe. So I, I, wonder, I wonder if they can top that, you know? I think they'll try, I think they'll try. Of course they're gonna try. I don't think there ever is. Like, yeah, guys, that was it. We're, we're over the hill now. That would be a very yeah. good opening. Hi, guys. Chris here. This will be a very disappointing announcement <laughs> compared to 3.0. Um, we're, uh, we're pretty much done. We're tapped out. I'm out yeah. of ideas. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I remember being shown that trailer for the first time of the five new acts. I was actually like in the office at the time, and uh, it was a little, little bit early. I know, streamer privilege. But uh, they, Chris has a habit of trolling me a lot with announcements and giving me fake announcements and feeding me false information. I don't know, maybe he still doesn't trust me or something, but... Uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Look at me. But uh, I, it went the first act and I'm like, oh, new act, sick. And then it went another one, I'm like, okay. And then it went bam, 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 the next like three acts. I'm like, you trolling me? <laughs> and now uh, it's, it, Chris has said that this is going to be bigger than that, so... I don't imagine we're getting five more acts. That would five be. more, twenty-five, at least six more. For yeah, no, 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 no. For you, it to be you multiply, inflation, you right? multiply. No. Hype inflation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like eighteen more acts, like thirty-six more acts, something like that. So uh, I mean, that's the only thing that would be reasonable. Otherwise, I'm going to be extremely disappointed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're like, try not to <laughs> try not to say something that they possibly can't meet. I believe we have like just a moment until it's actually beginning. Everything's gone quiet. Everyone's gone. There was people around. Now they're all gone. Mm. Oh, happened? yeah. We must yeah. be missing out on something. Yeah, I don't know. Should we, like, go see what's up over there? Well, probably waiting around and watching an empty stage is more entertaining than us, so... Probably. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I think uh, I'll thank Taki and Kriparian for joining me. I'm Ziggy D, and we'll be back a little bit after to ramble for a little while longer. But we'll actually have content then, because we'll have seen things that we can discuss. So. I hear applause. Oh, it's beginning. And fade out.
that look in your eyes. I recognize it. Survivors, just like Aina. That is my name, exiles. Aina, Aina Frey, which means lone fighter. For a long time, I've searched for a worthy companion, a hunter as fierce and strong and handsome as Aina. I walked the plains of Vastery and found no one worthy. I delved into the Azurite mines. Even though my best friend Nico begged me not to, I found many crunchy bugs, but still no hunter. Then I decided there was only one place left to search. The land of New Zealand! Oh, this is not the menagerie. I now must have taken a wrong turn on the path of exile. <laughs> I make a joke. <laughs> you like it? I know where I am. Do you? Do you? Do you? I know because I now knows. Welcome to Exile Com 2019. Or, or, as the local survivors like to say, Kiora! Yes, from the land of the orc, yes. Now, what was I going to say? Hmm, I have come a, oh, yes, we have people here from all over the planet, yes? Yes? Very brave to come here all this way. But don't worry, here we have at Exalcon shelter, food, and weapons. Uh, I hope you bring your weapons, huh? Huh? I brought mine. Come, come, Shadow, come, come. This is my Shadow. He goes everywhere with me. <laughs> Now, do we have any beasts in the building? Oh, there's one. I said, do we have any beasts in the building? Oh, yes, I hear you well now. I now can hear. Well, my beast friends, you know what I like to do with a beast? I like to hunt them and kill them with my bare claws. Well, they're not really bare claws, but you know. Uh, if I can't kill them with my bare claws, you know, I like to use my crossbow. I prefer to call it my happy bow. <laughs> you see, come Shadow, come. This is how it works. When I'm hunting, first of all, if I'm going for a big beast, like this one here, he looks like a big beast. Stand up, beast. Not you, the big one next to you. You are, you are too skinny. You will make a good carcass, yeah? Very useful. Don't worry, we use all the pieces of the animal, like grinding gears, using all the pieces for the game. Big beast, stand up. What is your name? What? No, she. Okay, welcome, Noshi. Put your hands up so I can aim straight. <laughs> no, no, put your hands up. Did I say put them down? <laughs> I tell you when to put your hands down. So, when I'm hunting a big beast like Noshi, I have to tread very carefully. I'm stalking now. I'm not talking, I'm stalking. And then I'm taking aim, generally in Oshi's direction, And boom, he's captured. You can sit down now. When I'm going for a slightly smaller beast, I have to, yes, you can stand up now, smaller beast. <laughs> yes, what is your name? Very exotic name. 
So when I'm aiming for a smaller beast, like, what? Jason? Okay. When I'm going to take a shot, Jason here, I have to aim more carefully, like this. I'm lining up my shot, and boom! He's been captured. Good, yeah. Aina is very good. Shadow, where are you? You can take it away. Because when I am hunting little tiny insects, I can't use my crossbow, can I? So I have to stamp on them. It's funny. Oh yes, yeah, funny. So if I'm if I'm stamping on them, I have to stamp a few times because one little insect is not very nutritious, is it? So I have lots of insects. I pick them up. I eat them. Very nutritious. Very good. So today. I have come from very far away to be here at exile. Yes. Do you know how many beasts I had to sacrifice to get here today, just to get the portal open? <laughs> I lost count at 50 beasts, and I will have to sacrifice 50 more just to get back to my menagerie. But don't worry, because here today, you uh, well, we are here all weekend. All of us here to celebrate. All of us here to celebrate. You are going to get a chance to meet the originals. The, all the first ones from Grinding Gear Games. Don't worry, they are not going to bite you like the first ones I is used to. Don't worry. They are very friendly beasts. You are going to get to talk to them and they are going to talk to you. It's going to be great. Today, at this convention, is here for Aina to meet all his friends and talk about all his achievements. But this is not AinaCon. This is ExileCon! Now, now, if this was Ainacon, things would be very different. The main event would be sacrifice by combat. Yes, I'm coming to you, you two. Yes, two lucky survivors here. Are you married? Oh, then this should be very easy for you. Because when you are married, you will find a lot of fighting going on. A lot of... It, it, and, and you know, it, very, very easy. But so don't worry. Things are only going to get worse. Now. <laughs> Sacrifice by combat. I like that. If this was... I, oh, listen. We also... I have to say. Out there, on one of the stages, we have streamers. Do you know what streamers is? Yeah? If this was Einacon, we would just have lots of blood and goo and snot and everything just pouring off the stage all over you, married people. You like that, huh? We can see who has the biggest bloodstream. It will be good. Oh, I like your hair. It's a very nice beast. The only problem is he can't see behind you now. <laughs> you can see. I like it. You have to tell me what you're doing with your head. So, we are going to have streamers. This is not really what it is. Streamers is where you have another stage up there, and you will be able to talk and speak, and talk and meet, more meet, more talk, more meat, more talk. Mmm. Meat. I am hungry. I didn't have my breakfast this morning. Meat. No. This is what it is, streamers. Now, the other thing you will be able to do today in ExileCon, you will be able to buy many, many things. Many, many things, you lucky people, that is ex exclusive here to ExileCon. Let me show. Oh, no, save it. This one is very rare. This is an albino rower. 
Very rare. Here's a little beastie here. It's a baby rower. Very cute, yes? No, it grows into a huge monster and will eat you up. <laughs> this one is for you somewhere. Okay. He's captured, he's captured. Here, we have another beast. This is a corp, a sand, a sand, a sand, a sand, a sand spitter, I think they call it. Yeah, sand spitter. I think I used to date one. No. I think I, I think I used to ate one. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I now make funny, funny. <laughs> this one's for you. Oh, yeah. And this one here, for you too, because you're lovers. I like you. Give it to them. And one over here. Oh, very good catching. But this is my baby. This is very rare. It's a little albino for my new friend down here. So today we are going to have, there are announcements to be made. You have to listen out because I have been told by the first ones there are going to be announcements, there are going to be games you can play. So you have to listen, and Aina has been told to say this. I do not know what it means, but this is what I've been told. Aina was also told to prepare a long talk. Yes. This is better, I think, you know. A long talk is boring. Aina is only used to talking to beasts in the menagerie, and they do not listen good. So, a little poetry. Thank you. What is your name? Thank you, Russell, for putting me on the spot. <laughs> I love to hunt. I love to smile. But most of all, I love you, exile. <laughs> but more than that, I love to hunt. Now. I'm going to make a special announcement now. Do not do what the rower do, okay? Do not do your toilet all over the floor. All over the floor. All right? There is uh, defecation houses just through into the foyer. Please use that. The other thing, of course, is if there is a fire, Please make your way to the nearest safe exit. You will look around, you'll find your nearest exit. Make your way very carefully, very quietly. And if you do want to light a fire, be quiet about it. <laughs> now, I think this is all I have to say. So, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce you now to three of my best friends. They are more beautiful, and they smell better than the beasts in the menagerie, except on patch days. <laughs> they are the reason Aina exists. We wouldn't be here without them. Please, put your claws together for the three founding fathers of Grinding Gear Games, Path of Exile. Please welcome Chris. Jonathan and Eric! Hello. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Love you too. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. <laughs> and welcome to ExileCon. <laughs> this is Eric, our creative director, and of course... <laughs> he's, he's responsible for all of the scary shit that you've seen and are gonna see. And this is Jonathan, our technical director. How are you feeling? Everyone. 
It's, uh, it's pretty scary up here, honestly. You know, like there's yeah. a ton of people in the audience, ton of people online. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, there's six digits watching on Twitch, yep. plus el everywhere else, and there's <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of people out there. <laughs> well, it's honestly really amazing that all you guys could join us here in New Zealand. We understand it's really far away from everywhere else in the world. I think like a 12-hour flight to anywhere except for Australia. Um, hopefully more than a few of you are doing really fun activities in New Zealand, like visiting Hobbiton. Um, that's really good, worth checking out. So we've been preparing the content you're going to see this weekend for a really long time, many years. And after so many years of planning, it's finally, it's amazing to finally be here on stage to present it. Thank you so much for coming to see it in person, and thanks to everyone who tuned in from home to watch the live stream. So when we released Path of Exile 1.0 back in 2013, we had around 20 developers at Grinding Gear Games. They fit in one room. That version of the game only went up to Act 3. It was primitive by today's standards and was the first version of Path of Exile that we were proud enough to call fully released. We knew that to keep the game from getting stale, we had to do something really big every couple of years, in addition to the regular free content expansions. So by 2015, our studio had around 45 developers moved into its current office, and this allowed us to create an entirely new act of content for version 2.0, extending the length of Path of Exile's storyline by a third. While 2.0 was a big expansion, we knew the jump to hit 3.0 had to be a lot bigger. So we expanded the studio to 90 developers and were able to add six new acts of content in 2017. That was honestly one of the best moments of my life. After keeping the secret that we were adding six new acts, there weren't any leaks, we released a trailer that kept revealing new acts in sequence, and the reactions from the community were amazing. It just made all the hard work worthwhile. So since then, we've been asking ourselves the question, how are we possibly going to top that? Well, over the last two years, we've expanded up to 145 developers, and we're really proud to finally reveal Path of Exile 4.0. The gods are dead, but left on their own. Men will always seek to take their place. Criminals, your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until dead. Let your souls be the first ones, and your bodies be the land. The only result is pain and death. The demon is escaping! Kill her! Get her! That feels amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Path of Exile 2 is a storyline set 20 years after the defeat of Gatava. When we finished developing 3.0, we knew that we couldn't extend Path of Exile's campaign forever. Adding more acts would make the game just too long before players got to maps. At the same time, we knew we really needed to bring the quality of Path of Exile's campaign up to a 2019 standard. We realized that we needed to make a new campaign. For years now, we've been wanting to make a sequel to Path of Exile. The problem with that, though, is that sequels split a community between two products. 
It's also hard for a sequel to compete with the amount of content and features that the original game has. We've just spent six years making expansions for Path of Exile, so imagine if we released a Path of Exile 2 and it was just a bare campaign with none of that extra content. This would be a sad shell of an action RPG compared to the current state of Path of Exile. It would have none of the years of expansion content and improvements that make the game great. So we're creating Path of Exile 2 as a new campaign alongside Path of Exile 1 with a shared endgame. The original campaign is still fully playable, and because it's the same game, it'll still continue to be maintained with all of the updates and game system improvements that we'll make to Path of Exile. When we add new skills to the game, you'll be able to play with them in either the Path of Exile 1 or Path of Exile 2 campaign, and all of the microtransactions and stash tabs that you've purchased in the past will be fully usable regardless of which campaign that you're playing. <laughs> Most importantly, all of your favorite Path of Exile expansion content, like Delve, Breach, Incursion, and Lesion, will be fully integrated. At the same time, we wanted the freedom to make all of the changes that a true sequel requires, like changing the skill system, all of the ascendancy classes, improving the engine, and a lot of other things that we aren't announcing this weekend. Path of Exile 2 addresses all of the things that we feel are deficiencies in Path of Exile 1. We're not abandoning the Path of Exile 1 campaign, though. Not only is it still fully supported in Path of Exile 4.0, we're doing a lot of work to get it up to a 2019 standard. Here's what Act 1 Town looks like in 3.9, which we're releasing in four weeks. We're also going through the campaign, and we're improving materials to work with our new physically-based rendering pipeline. Over the next year, you're going to see a lot of improvements to the Path of Exile 1 campaign, which will be deployed ahead of 4.0 with a 3.9 series of patches. We're also re-rigging all the old character classes to work with the new 4.0 animations, so you'll get all of the ongoing animation improvements in the old Path of Exile 1 campaign as well. In the next year, we're going to continue to deliver four amazing leagues on a regular three-month cycle. All of this content is designed with the Path of Exile 2 campaign in mind, and we'll continue to fold it into the game as needed, like we would with any other league. We don't have a firm release date for Path of Exile 2 yet, and are absolutely going to wait until it's ready before releasing it. We're planning on waiting at least another year with 3.9 expansions before the beta of 4.0, though. So, I'm sure you're wanting to see some 4.0 gameplay. We've prepared a live demo for you. Everything ready, Jonathan? Everything's ready. All right, let's go. So, today Jonathan's going to do a short live demo of some of the content we have in this build of Path of Exile 2. This is played right live, like he's literally playing right there. <laughs> We're standing here at about level 11 which is about halfway through Act 1, because we want everyone seeing the playable demo of the sh on the show floor to be able to experience the start of Act 1 without having any of the surprises spoiled for you. So right away, as Jonathan plays through the graveyard, you'll notice the massive improvements we've made to the Path of Exile engine since 3.0 was released. Environments, characters, and items all use physically-based rendering, which gives the whole game a realistic look. We have new main character classes, uh, new main character class models with all new animations and completely new item base types. Most of these have physics for many of the little details, which look a lot, a lot more awesome than before. We've put a lot of work into updating skill effects. For example, when you fire a split arrow, you'll really feel the individual arrows, because they can stick in objects and they can bounce off others realistically. <laughs> oh. This looks so good. <laughs> Slight spoiler, but that support gem he's using turns any skill into a barrage. Any bow skill. <laughs> so, the 4.0 campaign contains a variety of optional side quests that lead to meaningful boss encounters. Relatively soon now, Jonathan's going to encounter an NPC called Lockland who has lost his family and needs help. Isabel and the boys were only to be gone for a few minutes, but it has been... I don't even know how long. Hours at least. Days. Weeks. What season is it? Stranger, I know we have just met, but I'm so worried about them. Around here, they could have fallen into a sinkhole or been choked by grave dust. Please, could you see to their safety? The game has changed a lot more than just visually, though. One of the things we've really wanted to do for a long time is to make fundamental changes to Path of Exile's skill system.